What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today we've got a big rumor thread. I was thinking about doing individual videos, but I was like, you know what? Let's just get it all here in one big video, going down all of the newest rumors with the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo games, and more from Kamaro over on Twitter. When it comes to this guy's, remember, take it with a grain of salt at this point. I've covered this guy's rumors before. Sometimes he's on, sometimes he's off. His track record is spotty, just like most people's track record when it comes to these leaks and stuff like that. So remember, don't take it as all of this is 100% fact, but just as a rumor. But I have covered some stuff that he said before that has came true. Some of the other stuff has not. Some of the stuff is still working in development. So we'll see what happens. But please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and check out the link in the description below for our Shin Megami Tensei 5 premium edition giveaway that will be going down this week so you're going to want to enter into that now we're starting off with Kamaro's tweet on Twitter where he talks about the next Nintendo switch and he has this to say 2022 will be the last strong year for the Nintendo switch since 2023 will be the start of a new generation for Nintendo with a new console. Very similar to the actual Switch, but a little bit more powerful than the PlayStation 4 with 4K, new functions, and compatible with old Switch games. It's unclear when they're planning to release it. It should be holidays 2023, but they have some games in the pipeline to make a strong debut. Mario Kart, a new Mario 3D, a complete edition of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and improved versions of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel and Metroid Prime 4. That, I think, at this point is going to be Breath of the Wild of the new console with dual release. There is some casual games there, too. The actual Switch should be around at least until 2024 with some compatible games for both systems. After that, they will focus on the new console. So this is something that I've talked briefly about on the channel when it comes to the next Switch and things like that. I do think that the timeline here is accurate, not because he knows it or anything like that, more because he might have just guessed it, or maybe he does have a little bit of information. But I do feel that 2022 will be the last strong year of full support for the Switch. And then 2023, they're going to start transitioning into what they do next. Now, whether they release it in 2023 or they wait till 2024 is going to be something that's going to be interesting to see. There was a lot of talk whether Nintendo was going to release the Switch in 2016 holiday or 2017 early. And I made a video saying, hey, I think it's going to be 2016. There was rumors. So you don't know at this point. And I really think that's up to decision, right? I don't think that they're clear. They're going to wait and see, see how things are going, see how the software is being developed. And if they have to wait till March of 2024, they'll do it. If they can get it done in the holiday, they'll do that as well. They'll do what's best for them when it comes to the development and the game. So it is what it is there now we do have more information in terms of what Kamaro has to say on various different games here which we are going to go through the whole thing here so buckle up boys and girls next up is the legend of zelda breath of the wild sequel is coming to the end of the development cycle very soon so they should release the game next year with no delays even if that means a december 2022 release light time and sky was some of the key names that they use in the development cycle it will be the main event for the next E3. Oracle remakes are 2023 plus, and Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD should be released before the end of summer next year, or at least one of them, since I don't know if they still plan to release both as a single pack. So let's talk about this real quick. So yes, there has been some discussion whether The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, the sequel, will be actually launching in 2022. I think that Nintendo wanted to have this game out for the anniversary, but Whatever the case is with COVID, development, whatever they wanted to do, they needed a bit more time, so they did prolong that release. And that's okay, because I think the game's going to turn out to be extremely cool. I think there's going to be a lot of verticality with the game. I think there's going to be areas to go in the sky. There's going to be areas to go underneath. There's going to be probably some dungeons, better dungeons here and there. There's going to be better weapons. There's going to be better ideas. This game looks like a complete... Like, I would not say it doesn't, like, completely turn things upside down when it comes to the open world, but I think that we're going to see so many new ideas, so many new things in this Zelda game. This might be the pinnacle in terms of what Nintendo's done when it comes to the open world formula for any of their games. So I'm very excited to see what Breath of the Wild comes to. Now, when it comes to the other Zelda stuff that's going on, very interesting. I do think that Nintendo does obviously have plans to make remakes of previous games 
Link's Awakening from the Game Boy over to the Switch was a huge success. I think they sold over 4 million copies of that game. For what that game is, that's a lot of money. So yeah, you can bet that Grezzo or someone is going to be working on some of the older Game Boy or lesser known Zelda games to come over to Nintendo Switch. And yeah, I do think that Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, those could be in the same time slot that Skyward Sword HD got with its summer release. So I think those are happening as well. So nothing too crazy when it comes to The Legend of Zelda here and what Komaro had to say. Now, like I said, keep on buckling up here because we're heading into Advance Wars. Advance Wars 1 and 2 remakes are getting huge improvements after being delayed to spring 2022. Developers were busy after the reel at E3 and Intelligent Systems is helping out more than they expected. So that means the game has to fight with the Fire Emblem remake that will release next year too. So I wouldn't be surprised if they release both games with one to two months of difference, April to June, like in the GBA era. So let's talk about this a little bit more. So for those who don't know, Advance Wars is a game that Intelligent Systems actually makes, the developers of Fire Emblem. They were the original creators of Advance Wars. Now, Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, that is a remake of the original first and second games with online play, with updated graphics, with all sorts of cool stuff, right? So that's pretty cool, right? But after the initial release of the game, it did seem like people weren't too surprised with it or weren't too impressed with the graphical look or the fidelity or whatever the case is with the game. Heck, I was just happy to see Advance Wars come back after such a long absence. So I think that if they are getting intelligent systems to help out if they are getting them to kind of you know pitch in and everything that would be very good and i think that since we haven't seen the game in quite some time they haven't shown any footage of it they haven't shown anything it does lead me to believe that this is probably happening with what he's saying here like i think that there's probably more to this game and if intelligent systems is helping out that's obviously a big good thing now let's talk about this because he kind of slowly slips in there that there's a new fire emblem remake that's coming now this is something that i've covered quite a bit on this channel i've covered what's next for fire emblem multiple times whether we get a new follow-up to three houses we get a brand new theme new gimmick or we get a remake which is what i've talked about multiple times and there has been multiple rumors of there being a remake of fire emblem and i would absolutely love that now the big thing here is which game is it do they go all the way back to some of those exclusive japanese titles out there do they do genealogy of the holy war do they go and say hey let's take one of the most popular characters which is ike or roy or somebody like that and go back to one of their games I think the most likely thing here would be to follow what they did with Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia and go back even further to a game. So that would maybe be Genealogy of the Holy War that they go back to. However, this is the new Nintendo when it comes down to things. So they could have said, hey, you know what? We shouldn't go back that far. It's not like Shadows of Valentia sold extremely well or anything, although it was a late 3ds title when the switch was coming out and people probably would have played that or wanted that on the switch it would have done a lot better so you can't completely blame it on the game itself because the game is really good so they might say hey let's just try it again or they might say hey you know what it's probably better if we just move all the way up to what people have been asking for and that is fire emblem path of radiance with ike i mean i think that would probably be the best bet but then you also have an issue there too because there's two games in that story right so you have path of radiance and then you have radiant dawn so do you put both of them into one do you do one then you wait for the other do you mix the stories together like how do you get that done so i think that's probably what they're thinking about what they're going to do because if you do path of radiance you have to do radiant dawn to finish out ike's story or you have to somehow find a way to combine both of them into one game almost like a fire emblem fates but don't do what fire emblem fates did which was three separate games between fates and also conquest then the revelations so don't do that so they have to figure out a way to get it done that won't piss fans off but at the same time will be able to get the full story and scope without spending a ton of money remaking both of these because it's one thing to remake a Fire Emblem game on the Nintendo 3DS with what that system is and the budget that you can get, but it's a whole another thing to remake a GameCube game on the Nintendo Switch with full HD graphics and everything like that, which is a lot more expensive and Fire Emblem obviously doesn't have that type of sales potential in terms of a budget wise. Now you can get a good budget for Fire Emblem, you know, Nintendo always does that, but it's not one of their top of the top, right? So we'll see what happens going forward with that. Now, like I stated, we got some more to get into here, guys. There's a lot. 
So like I said, keep it going. So this one's going to be very interesting. Now, I talked about this before on the channel. We've talked about Metroid Dread sales. I had a video just recently, but now we have the first rumors of exactly how much Metroid Dread has sold. Now, I'll be honest here, guys. Have I gotten some rumors and pretty solid information of how much Metroid Dread has sold? Yes, I have. But am I going to be hinting anything or saying anything in relation to what this is here? No, I will not be. I will wait for Nintendo to announce the sales when it comes to it. But I did want to go over what Mr. Komaro had to say here with the sales of Metroid Dread because it might or might not be lining up with what I'm seeing publicly and what I have heard. So Nintendo is apparently very happy with the sales of Metroid Dread. With two plus million sales after the first two months, they are planning to release some free DLC, like a new difficulty mode at some point next year. And I'm guessing the new difficulty mode, would that be a harder difficulty mode or an easier difficulty mode for people? That will be the big question if that happens. Now, next up, Metroid Prime Remastered announcements are coming very soon. Since they want to keep the momentum for the franchise and the project is complete, Metroid Prime 4 in 2023. Also, it would be smart move to release an HD version of Samus Returns with some improvements in 2023. So he's adding in some of his own type of predictions and stuff along with what they're saying here with Metroid Prime remasters. So yeah, I mean, we've heard this before when it comes to Metroid Prime and when it comes to everything here um and it's interesting it's interesting to see what they're going to do with that i do think that a metroid prime remaster is definitely coming at some point i mean we heard at first it was going to be metroid prime trilogy hd now we've kind of heard hey it's going to be like more of a focused metroid prime remaster with some of the other games maybe coming later down the line so we'll see what happens with metroid prime 4 what they do what they announce and everything like that i do as a side note want to point out here uh there was a tag from rgt and uh, rgt says metroid dread has sold 1.6 million copies see i can say things too with zero proof smiley face so yeah definitely he's not believing that when it comes to it <laughs> probably sweating a little bit with this here too so it's very interesting so here's what i'll say with this guys in terms of what i know you know i track sales and from what i've seen so far from just my general tracking the sales it definitely seems like metroid dread is right around that two million sales point because if you look at it here in the u.s they sold pretty much one million copies in the first you know debut sales right i think doug bowser said around nine hundred thousand units in that first month of sales that they got in the mpd in terms of tracking which is really good now that doesn't include anything else right that just includes just the us for that october so very good there now if you count up japan as well which it broke pretty much every single debut metroid sales records for all the different games right you count up that as well then you count up europe which it broke multiple sales records in europe in various different parts of the world and then also the rest of asia where it was breaking some different sales records as well if you total up all of that within the first october month I'm pretty sure the game sold over 1.5 million. That is a safe assumption to say. Now, if you track it with, okay, well, how did it do in November when it comes down to things, right? November sales. If you look at Amazon, for example, that site is actually tracking that it sold pretty much in the top 10, top 15, pretty much the whole time. So tracking sales wise, it's continuing to sell from what I've been hearing with people with mom and pops, from what I've been hearing from some of the sources I have at Best Buy and GameStop and also Walmart, it's continuing to sell. It's not like they have stock just sitting there. Now, it's not selling at a pace like Mario or Pokemon or Zelda or anything like that, but it's selling at a decent clip what you'd expect a game that's gonna sell anywhere from 2 million to maybe three to 4 million would sell. It's selling at that decent clip. And if you look at it too, with the MPD, people were pointing out that oh well didn't make the top mpd top 10 for nintendo switch well it was number 11 because there was a ton of the evergreen games and some of the newer titles so i think it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward but i do believe that metroid dread is right around 2 million sales or so just based off of that first debut month where worldwide it pretty much seemed like it did pass the 1.5 million i think it would be very easy to say at this point that it sold for november then also a little bit in december here so far we're almost uh, through December, we're getting close to being done through December, more than halfway through, that it tacked on at least another 500,000 units or so for a 2 million unit sales mark. So that's not necessarily too crazy or anything to think. And also from my own tracking, 
I've also tracked that it's doing better than Fire Emblem, it's doing better than Paper Mario, it's doing better than some of these games that sold 3 million in their first year, at least initially. Now, we'll see what happens in the future, okay? We'll see what happens in the future. But initially, Metroid Dread is definitely tracking better than some of these other 3 million unit sellers that Nintendo does have. So it's going to be interesting to see going forward. And even a game like Clubhouse Games, I always have to bring up that game because that game did nowhere near as good as Metroid Dread. It wasn't a big seller in the US when it comes to it, but then all of a sudden it just got residual sales, residual sales to the point to where it hit 3 million. I think Metroid Dread could definitely pass up games like Clubhouse or Paper Mario or Fire Emblem. So we'll see what happens though. I guess I can still be wrong here, right? When it comes down to it, we don't know until we actually get the sales numbers from Nintendo and everything, but so far so good for Metroid Dread. Now, next up, we are going to talk about some more 2022 plans, <laughs> initial 2022 plans. Like I said, this is quite a bit of a video here, guys. So we're going to have a lot here. Here is what Komaro has to say here with the initial 2022 plans for video games. The lineup, Pokemon Legends Arcus, that's going to be January. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, that is spring. Advance Wars 1 and 2, that looks like it's going to be April. Casual IP that we don't know about at this point, so we'll see what that is. Splatoon 3. I'm guessing Splatoon 3 would be a summer release. Fire Emblem Echoes, which would be a legacy title, right? A remake of a legacy title for Fire Emblem. Detective Pikachu, which that game has gone missing, so here it comes. <laughs> here it comes again. Next up. Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess, Mario Plus Rabbids 2, Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime, new 2D Donkey Kong. So the Donkey Kong rumors have surfaced here when it comes down to it. And there was a lot of talk whether that was going to be 3D or 2D. So it looks like maybe it's going to be 2D, but you never know. We have to wait and see. Maybe it's a hybrid. Maybe it's 2D and 3D. Next up, Pokemon Let's Go sequels. So that's also a new one there. I'm not sure if we're going to see Let's Go sequels, but maybe they go to Johto. Maybe they do Pokemon Let's Go. They have gold and silver. That would be interesting if they did that. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel and the Monolith Soft Project. So, whew, that was a lot to go over there. And let's go over his next tweet. I don't think there's going to be more room for much more besides finished games like Style Boutique. Yes, it's coming. It was a 2021 release. And the eShop game from Intelligent. And sadly, some delays can happen. So he's kind of giving himself a little bit of an out there just in case something does get delayed, which it can be, right? There can be some delays and all that. But this is a packed lineup, man. This is a packed lineup, which we already knew about a lot of these games, right? Like Pokemon, Kirby, Advance Wars, Splatoon 3, we know about Detective Pikachu, we know about Mario Plus Rabbids, Bayonetta, we know about the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, and there's been tons of rumors on these other games with the Monolith and Donkey Kong and all of that. So yeah, this is definitely packed here, and I can see a lot of these games happening. I don't know about the Let's Go stuff, I don't know about the 2D Donkey Kong, I haven't heard too much about those things. But overall, can this stuff happen? Absolutely it could, but once again, just take it with a grain of salt for right now, unless the stuff is confirmed like we've seen so far. But yeah, looks like it's going to be a packed last year or so for the nintendo switch and if they do get all of these games out in 2022 man nintendo better just hope they can actually keep up with the production when it comes to the chip shortage because those switch oleds and those regular switches are going to be selling like crazy and they're going to need to have stock getting ready to go especially for the holiday if they have a metroid prime a bayonetta a legend of zelda the monolith soft project which could be xenoblade 3 could be something new man like that will be awesome if that is the case all right guys let's keep it going here we got this last bit from Kamaro here and he says and to finish i've been talking about a new racing game by nintendo since two to three years ago the project started as a racing game to be around mario kart 8 deluxe as an alternative but not as a mario kart but apparently things changed a little bit since the last time i heard about it the main idea and the best way to describe it was like a Mario Kart cross Smash Bros with a big focus in the online community with lots of weekly stuff to do and new ways to race, not just carts and bikes, and new ways to take down other racers. The thing is, after the insane sales of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and still selling like hotcakes, Nintendo decided to not release it on the Switch and use it as a launch title for the next console as the new Mario Kart even when this game wasn't supposed to be a Mario Kart at the beginning. Not sure how much of its original content will survive at the end, but will be cool if they still go with the Nintendo All-Stars route. 
all right see you next year for new info so once again take this all with a massive grain of salt but let's kind of talk about a number of different things here when it comes to Mario Kart. So I think at this point, yeah, you know, it would be a little bit, I would say, naive to not think Nintendo saw the sales and were like, all right, man, like we just can't release something right now. We got to make sure that we do something else so we can take more time or whatever the case is. And if they did do something different, right, if they did start out as something that can be released alongside, I don't think Nintendo saw that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would sell like it did. Like, I don't think anybody saw that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would sell like it did. It pretty much has been selling like a brand new Mario Kart because of the failure of the Wii U. Just like a lot of Wii U titles that came over to the Switch and they all did better on the Switch, they essentially sold like new games because most people did not have a Wii U. Most people did not play those games, so therefore they're new to pretty much everybody, which is why most people don't care about the price tag or whatever the case is, right? So that's that. Now, if Nintendo was able to create something like this, I think that would be so much better for, I would just say, Mario Kart, right? If they take this base, right? And if they take the Nintendo All-Star stuff, people have been asking for that. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has a little bit of that, right? You can use Isabel, you can use Link, you can have like Captain Falcon car in there. There's different tracks. There's Captain Falcon track in there, F-Zero, all of that, right? So since they do have that, you can see that they're already kind of thinking about some of that type of stuff, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to go that route, but definitely the online community, the weekly stuff, all of that would be much appreciated because then they can kind of take it and add in new content without people complaining, like, hey, we need some new stuff. People have been wanting new DLC or new courses or new stuff for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for forever, but the game just wasn't built that way. It was not built to be consistently getting new things, just the way that the online works, it wasn't. So if they made a game that was about the weekly challenges, that was about getting new content, that was about having new characters being added in almost like mario kart tour that game is built for that type of structure right to get new content to get new different things nintendo was already thinking about that so this to me makes complete sense but i do feel that this will be a dual launch i think that this game whatever they decide to do will be a dual launch on the regular switch because it probably started development on there obviously it did not even probably it did start development on the regular switch so there's no point in throwing away all of that plus Kamaro does say here that they will support the regular Switch as well. So I see dual releases. I see upgraded. So like, let's say you play it on the Nintendo Switch 2. You're going to be able to get better resolutions. You're going to be able to get maybe some better frame rates during cutscenes or during whatever the case is, right? So I think that would be a very good thing if they did that for this next Mario Kart game or racing game or whatever it turns out to be. But overall, all of this stuff is very interesting. But once again, it's all rumors. So take it just that way so those are my thoughts on everything here when it comes to the big rumor roundup what do you guys think let me know your thoughts in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and we will see you for the next video peace